It's The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa, and we take you through the pages at this point of the national dailies. Uh, we'll start off with the leadership newspaper this morning. We also have the punch amongst orders. Now, G.J. Johnson is on standby. He joins the conversation in no time. G.J. Johnson, good morning, and thank you for joining us. Okay, well, we get him as soon as we're able to have him connect with us on the leadership newspaper. Political parties reject drug tests for aspirant. And that's a bold caption for the leadership. Underneath says it's an affront. One NDLEA, not to toy with politicians. <laughs> CSOs divided over planned drug tests. Tests not to stigmatize aspirants, says the NDLEA. Uh, so, I mean, the back and forth yesterday, it talked about this. But of course, no one was anticipating that you're going to have these politicians or the aspirant, these aspirants agreeing to this. Now, 2023 presidency, again, Northern elders say no to zoning. What is the party saying? Nobody can rig 2023 elections, President Mohammed Buhari tells politicians. And the likes of um, Nyai Tok would say, it's the best thing that happened to Nigerians. I wish they knew. Uh, denies ordering Senate to remove Section 84 and Subsection 12 from Electoral Act. That's what this uh, rider is quoted to say underneath that board caption. 20, uh, also talking about 2023, but this time the Niger 2023 Blueprint Publisher picks APC nomination form. Everyone can pick a form. Article 6, right of first refusal from PDP. Uh, that's what also you find here this morning on the leadership. Now, these are some of the headlines. But just before we move away from the leadership, Kanu, Cross River, true example of national unity, Emia. Bayaharo is quoted to say, I'm sure a lot of people might want to argue, argue with that particular, uh, you know, postulation that's been put out by the Emir uh, Bayaharo. That's the much we can take this morning on the leadership. Away from the leadership, uh, we'll slide on next to the Punch newspaper. The main caption is on the presidency, PDP reps sons one Jonathan groups or group threatens suit. With some riders there. Ex-president can't contest it is risky he'll be ridiculed. Falano, Emeka Ngige. Reject APC, Buhari's offer it is offensive, disgraceful to all of us PDP reps. We'll go to court if Jonathan joins race. We won't tolerate impunity. Group is quoted in that. The latest on the ASU is on um, above the masthead of the Punch newspaper. ASU, NLC, plans solidarity protests, three-day warning strike. Train attack, terrorists release newborn's picture. Can intensifies prayers. I deserve right of first refusal, Atiku tells PDP. Our more stories, NNPC, three others generate 28.02 trillion naira in three years, according to a report by NATI. 65 core members to repeat service in Ondo, others. Security challenges, threats to Nigeria's existence, Gbajabia Mila. PDP leaders will work to rescue Nigeria, says Makinde. UI student disappears from Lagos construction site, family panics. Ogun police parade 69 suspected ritualist kidnappers, others. Woman pays Lagos traditionalists 26 billion naira mercy, it's actually a woman, for spiritual cleansing. One person actually, not to think it was several, but this time around, found that it was just one person. Wow, people do have so much money to throw away. AFC, others emerge, uh, preferred bidders for 12 federal highways. All right, Nigeria's proven gas reserves worth over $803.4 trillion. That's according to government. Federal government declares Monday, Tuesday, public holidays. And those are all of the stories on the front page of the Punch newspaper this morning. 
All right, we move away from the punch. Uh, let's quickly take a look at the Daily Independent newspaper just before we move away. Uh, on the Daily Independent newspaper, Ramadan Airlines raised fares to northern states by 167%. Airlines raised fares to northern states by 167%. <laughs> That's boldly written, and they say fare determined by demand and supply. <laughs> That's what you find there. Also, on the Daily Independent, Jonathan not qualified to contest for president again. Fallon is quoted on that. It, it will constitute the crux of our conversation as we proceed. 2023 presidency. Give me right of first refusal. Article begs the PDP leaders. Also, Labour threatened strike over federal government's negligence of ASU. This might, it might just be a long one. And... Absu vows to resume suspended strike next week. Federal government, state, and local government share 19.01 trillion naira mineral revenue in three years. Uh, that's also another caption. And you find another board headline saying, Total to put its stake in joint venture on sale. It might just be some uh, business and... Uh, Editorial report right here. Buhari vows to protect votes of Nigerians in 2023. And all the quarters would say, the president saying, nobody can wreak these elections. Also, um, Vice President debunks Tunubu's influence in becoming the vice president. Okay, uh, these are really interesting days and times. Well, these are some of the headlines this morning on the Daily Independent newspaper. And of course, we also have the Nation newspaper this morning. Buhari to court, Electoral Act 84, subsection 12, unconstitutional. Insecurity, Sokoto Western sleep in Niger Republic. Terrorists release photo of baby born by a hostage. All right, more stories on the, um, the nation, a PDP suit for hearing May 16, APC drops guideline on resignation awaits court verdict. NEF, that's Northern Elders Forum Chair, urges parties to throw presidential tickets open. PDP screens 48 aspirants for governor in Southwest, Southeast. Bolarumi challenges Makin Day. Abakiri loses bail battle. ICPC probes FMC bus over 176 million naira COVID-19 cash. Let's see if we can take other stories on the Nation newspaper this morning. Falano, a Jonathan barred by constitution from contested. Okay, shutdown of 840 megawatts plans to worsen power outage. Uh, those are the bulk of the stories on the front page of the Nation newspaper this Friday morning. We do have G.D. Johnson joining the breakfast at this point in time for his thoughts on the papers and uh, looking at some of the top stories on our national dailies. Once again, thank you for joining us, G.D. Johnson. It's a pleasure to be with you, John Johnson. Good morning to our viewers and everybody else. So, um, let's quickly share your thoughts on this one. It talks about the politicians saying they will not adhere to the drug test. And that's on the leadership newspaper this morning. Is that what? Is that what left it? So, Can yes. The drug enforcement agency had mentioned that there was going to be a drug test for politicians as a matter of fact that written to the apc now the politicians are saying that's never going to happen so there's a back and forth at this point in time what are your thoughts on this new development and the actions from you know the politicians i think that um, the national drug law and enforcement agency does understand they are extending beyond the quality of they are responsibility. And I think that they are just trying to seek any money. And that's why I said that they are fighting the APC and then extending the other public parties that they should be subject for 
for the political for political aspirants contesting the election. I don't think it's within the purview of NDLE to interfere in affairs of parties and internal internal parties at well. Probably after they put the candidates and then it becomes part and parcel of the criminal process for the candidates that are contesting the election. But for the primary, what is the business of NDLE with the internal structure of a political party? And there are other things that they could do rather than focusing the, focus the attention on the political I think that they have got attention to them. But I'm saying, second chicken attempt by, by NDLE. That's my problem. That's my on that. Punch newspaper this morning, uh, J.D. Johnson, and uh, the president is actually the main focus. Uh, PDP reps, SANS or SANS rather, won Jonathan uh, group threatened suit. It's all about uh, his um, eligibility to contest uh, the 2023 election as um, the president, and uh, a lot of people and a lot of groups are reacting. How do you reason, J.J.? Well, I uh, saw. So Within the rights of general participation, and as within his right to choose his political platform to contest the, the election, whether he wants to go to a city that will fight him, demonize him in 2014, or whether he wants to go back to PDP that was a platform to which he was elected first as a vice president and then the president, as well as deputy governor and governor of Biosystem. So, um, the, the contention is with respect to whether he, he could contest a deal or to not contest a deal, he will never for the court to depart. But as far as I'm concerned, he's entitled like to, to contest the election. He only completed the final of the corner and he not done his second. If he had won the election in 2015, he would have completed the corner as the president. Uh, the Federal Republic for executive uh, term. So those groups, it was the political, the court to decide whether he's eligible or he's not eligible. But uh, for me, that law, in the first instance, with the benefit of I don't think we need that law. How would this stop you from, for example, a governor died in Latin, and then the deputy completed his tenure? I said because he's been sworn in twice, he, he cannot seek the election again if he wins another election. I mean, it's, it's, it's infringing on the right. It's affecting Jonathan to be based on different, coming from different views. But who do we know that he's going to happen tomorrow? That's, that's on the on that. Mm. So um, I, I think that we have a very interesting conversations on the papers this morning on the leadership. You have another caption saying, 2023 presidency. Again, nothing elders say no zoning. Well, um, there's no zoning in the 1999 Constant okay. There's no provision. The zoning arrangement was the PDP's arrangement. It was PDP arrangement to, to, to use the zoning structure for for their party. In in 2014, you recall that um, Kwankwaso Adiku and then the what's the name of this governor that one the period for the local government governor that is uh, Okorucha, uh, Senator Okorucha now, contested the APC primary in Lagos in, in 2014. So in 2019, the state was left alone for Buari to, 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 to pick the ticket for the APQ and Buari uh, and people pick that of PDP. However, I'm not to be based on the norm. But politics are not operate based on norm. Politics are operate based on interest. If you base on norm, you think that the party will pick their presidential candidate, both parties will pick their presidential candidate from the south. Because in 2019, the presidential candidate of APT was from the north. That of PDP was from the north. However, politics does not work in that in that that is that. And it's becoming clearer 
there is a need for us to have a conversation and regards how we move this nation forward. But if you ask me genuinely, of what benefit has professional presidents do to Nigeria? We have said it. I think we need to set this in federal character. We need to do away with this term by term presidency. We need to embrace <laughs> the principle of merit. We need to elect leaders based on their competence and not based on where they are from. The reason why we have found ourselves where we have found ourselves now is that we elect people on the basis of sentiment. And sentiment cannot solve Nigerian problems. If the best man is from the north, let him be the president. If he's from the south, let him be the president. If it is if it's from the north, let him be the president. And I think that's the way we should be looking at who becomes the president of Nigeria and we deal with this turn by turn. Of what benefit has Wali presidency be to people from Katina? Of what benefit has Obasanjo presidency been to people from 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 Ogun State? The interesting thing you must know is that Yadua yeah, was from Katina State. Wali is from Katina State. Obasanjo is from Katina State. Now, presently, the vice president has relocated politically. So good state, so good state by, by chance in this present democratic dispensation has gotten presidency for eight years, will get pre vice presidency for eight years. So what benefit can you travel to the land and land of the state? Come to Allah Bolia and Apiti. The people will throw you stones if you talk about it. Now, go to Kassira, can the president without the paraphernalia of his office? Travel to Kassina by road. So, um, the presidency has gone to Bayesa State. So, of what benefit has Jonathan presidency been to Bayesa? So, it doesn't matter if the president is going to be. If he's incompetent, you, 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 you face the consequence. However, if the president is not from your village, or is not from your ethnic group, is not from your political group, politi politi if he's competent, you will enjoy the, the deliverables of democracy. So we must do away with this turn by turn democracy. All right, uh, JJ, uh, let's slide on to the Daily Independent uh, newspaper. There are very interesting stories there. There is uh, that of um, the 2023 presidency, and uh, the former uh, vice president, Atiku Abubakar, is telling the PDP that um, he uh, deserves, you know, that's the word, and the right of our first refusal. There's also another one, a Ramadan airlines raising fares to northern state by a whopping 167%, saying that uh, it is a factor of demand and supply. Uh, let's see which one you want to just uh, jump on, GD. Well, uh, I, well, for me, the opportunity is about what is going on like that. It's the feeling of attachment that some mm. group of political uh, thing that we have about the death of this nation. So that's and I read, I saw one of the interviews that people done to me and said that I had 11 million votes. I had 11 million votes in the bank. So that's how they told the dummy of Buhari. Uh, Buhari has 10 million votes. Yeah, Buhari has 10 million It's not about votes, it's about competence. It's about people that have capacity to solve our problem. Now, Buhari, the majority of those that are finding themselves as presidential candidates, I've been part and parcel of the political process in 1999. And for almost a quarter of a century, what do we have to show for democracy? It's an insult for people like Atiku and Tinubu to invite them to they want to become president of, 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 of Nigeria at what age and at what state of their life. So let's, 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 it's not for the young people to decide, and it's not for the delegates of both parties to decide who be their. That's for the election. But as far as I'm concerned, I know who I will vote for when the election comes. And my conscience will be, will be clear that I vote according to my conscience and not based on the basis of primordial sentiment or not based on the basis of political parties, but I vote on the basis of competence, character, and integrity. J.D. Johnson, when do you think we're going to get off with, uh, I mean, it's going to be over with ASU and the federal government? It's, it's really sad. 
I'm asking, when do you think that we will get over with the ASU and the federal government saga? I mean, it's telling a lot when, on the education sector. When the Minister for Education for State, Minister of State for Education, does obtain the form to, to a person of interest to contest the presidential election, when the Minister of Labor and Productivity also indicated the interest, someone was given the responsibility to manage the Department of Government. And they have shown the lack of capacity to manage just the department of government. And that person has the gumption to say that they want to become president. So there's no end in sight to also strike because government is not engaging them. The people that we have elected are not engaging them. The people, those who have elected and appointed are not engaging them. So both um, as to um, federal government and two perpendicular lines. And we said perfect two particular lines can never meet until they meet as infinity. I will not infinity. So there's no conversation, there's no discussion. Election, electioneering and politicking are taking over. And as far as the political class are concerned, what the election is in, is in place. They don't care about anything. They don't care about us. Now if the in you consider that the Minister of State for Education has no trace of state, including the Minister of uh, Labor and Productivity that they could even have that thought to say that they want to contest for, for, for the presidency when they couldn't manage the educational sector. They now commit the whole economy into their own hand. What would they do with it? All right, Jide. So uh, before we wrap up this session, uh, let's talk about, do you really think it is fair that uh, the airlines are uh, talking about demand and supply and right now they're increasing airfares you know by 167 percent to just northern states really are they in order in your opinion well what are what are what are going to increase in nigeria i was discussing my colleagues were complaining that in the world that where there is a need for money to look into a salary yeah, the food price has skyrocketing, the standard, the cost of living. It's, it's naturally everybody the the satay of the sake of meat you buy, you bought for twenty naira that Buhari and and, and uh they used to campaign in 2014. It's sold for 18 naira now. So what is affecting the airline? Are they are they going to run as a loss? I, I knew of a friend that operates hospitality business. I went to his his, his place. They switch off again because the cost of diesel, this is almost unaffordable. So you know, you run a business at a loss, or you run a business. So if you factor in, I'm sure those airlines must have done factor analysis. They must have taken into consideration their income and expenses, and then what's the bottom line? So we don't put the blame on the airline operators. We put the blame on the federal government itself. What is government doing to ameliorate the pains of an average Nigerian? What is the federal government doing to, 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 to provide incentives for people running their businesses in the country? So there's, there's no bailout. In, all, in other class, there are bailouts for critical sector to the economy. What were the bailouts for? Well, we just saw them sharing money, money that cannot be accounted for. And then we'll just see. You can't blame the airline operator. It is practically almost impossible to run any kind of business in Nigeria. Hmm. I, I think that this might just be a plus for us. I mean, just quickly, we know that we're going to be talking about this in uh, the next minute. And uh, the issue of Jonathan saying that, you know, Falana saying that Jonathan is not qualified to contest for. Uh, the president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria come 2023. What are your thoughts? It is a court that can decide that it's not the opinion of anybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. So it's for the court to decide. Every Nigerian has the right to contest. Jonathan has only contested for that of the law. And I think he has the right to contest. But if anybody feels otherwise, the president will approach the court. And the court will decide whether it's qualified or not qualified to protect the election. However, I think that we need to challenge the constitutionality of that law itself. That law that was signed by the National Assembly needs to be tested. 
right, thank you court. so much. To see whether that law is constitutional or unconstitutional. That's that's my that's my take on um, with respect to that. I wish Jonathan good luck. After all, his name is good luck. He wants to contest the election. But Nigeria is ready for him. It's ready for him to decide. If he's still waiting for people to prop him to contest the election, then he's not a man of his men. He, he's not sure of himself. He doesn't even know what he wants to do. So we don't want reluctant presidency. We want right, people that so have much, made up their mind. All right, thank you so election. much, J.J. Johnson. I just came back from Abuja, and I saw different type of posters. You must run. You must run. You, you, you must run. You must run. Oh, my goodness. All right, uh, Jude Johnson, thanks for your thoughts that you have shared today. Jude Johnson is the chief lecturer, Nigerian Institute of Journalism. Thanks for your time this morning. All right, it is still the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa. We'll take a very short break. We'll come back and talk about the eligibility of a former President Goodluck Jonathan running you know, for 2023 presidency in a moment. You don't want to miss to join us again.